Hey guys, welcome back to Southern Confidential. And today we're going to break down um, what's going on or what we think is going on with regards to the subpoenas that were served on the village of Dalton. Now we know that they were served, but the question is, will the clerk, will the mayor and her team make good on the demands made in the subpoenas? Now we know according to the subpoenas and we've talked about it, we know they, that the village had been served, right? Um, but no one knows what's going on behind the scenes. Mainly though, no one knows if the mayor and her team, the clerk would make good on the deadline to submit the information to the grand jury. Now, our Chicago's own Regina Waldrop, she is going to break it all down um, from her perspective. And then she has some proprietary information um, that's going to shed some light on what we can expect from the grand jury. So I'll come back in a moment, but take a listen to what she's saying. I told you, the story has so many twists and turns. Sometimes I am so overwhelmed and just everything is going on. You know, I told my husband the other day, I, I said, I want to move to Dalton. I want to move there so I can be right there because literally there is a story every day happening in this community and I don't want to miss anything. Since our last video, so much has happened. We're talking more lawsuits, a grand jury, the subpoenas, the mayor's former assistant speaking out. Where do we begin? Let's start first with this federal grand jury and the subpoenas, which we have copies of thanks to someone very close to this investigation. So let's unpack these subpoenas. There's a lot in the subpoenas. So we know that a grand jury has been seated since November. Now, May 20th and May 13th, that's when Dalton's custodian of records was to appear before this special grand jury and bring with them a whole slew of documents for Mayor Tiffany Hinyard, Village Administrator Keith Freeman, and also Trustee Andrew Holmes, as well as several other companies and individuals. Now we're talking about financial reports, budgets, accounting records, receipts, also requested reimbursement documents, loans, work schedules, travel records paid for by the municipality, including documents for that infamous trip to Las Vegas, where the mayor's ex-assistant says, she was assaulted. Also requested are the mayor's records for her charitable organizations. And these records again were to be presented to the grand jury May 20th, May 13th. Now for that May 13th subpoena, the village custodian of records requests to bring personnel and disciplinary files for almost 30 people, as well as documents related to companies village administrator Keith Freeman is involved with. Now in April, Keith Freeman was indicted for bankruptcy fraud. The village and the mayor have not responded to our request for comments. But we were in court when Keith Freeman made his first appearance with his attorney. Now, Freeman didn't speak to any reporters who were there, but his attorney did. And he said Freeman is not stepping down from his position in the village or his position in Thornton Township. See, Keith Freeman, this mentality um, epitomizes you know, what's called kleptocracy. And that's when it's just corruption in politics where they enrich themselves secretly outside the rules of the law through whatever, kickbacks, bribes, special favors, you know, corporations, anything that they can get their hands on to enrich themselves. This mentality is just bold. It's right in your face. It's saying, yeah, you guys accused me of it. Yeah, I know the feds caught me in a lie um, on my bankruptcy documentation, whatever. People have gotten away with this and worse. Um, and so it is what it is. Stop me if you can. Catch me if you can. Now that's how it appears to me. And of course, that's my perspective on it. Um, and it's all alleged, right? And so back to Regina, um, she has a lot of good information. So stay tuned. In Thornton Township. So when we talk about grand jury proceedings, what happens during the grand jury? We don't know because those proceedings are secret. So we don't know right now if the custodian of records brought all those documents as they were supposed to. But a source familiar with this matter tells me that the village has asked for an extension. So let's talk about Fania Dukes. 
She is the mayor's former assistant, and she claims that on a taxpayer-funded trip to Las Vegas one year ago in May, she was assaulted by trustee Andrew Holmes. Now, Fania issued a video statement where she says she is a survivor. She talks about what allegedly happened before and after that trip to Vegas. She's also filed a civil lawsuit against Mayor Henyard and trustee Holmes accusing Holmes of assault and accusing Tiffany Henyard of retaliation. Now, according to the suit, after dinner, she walked the Las Vegas Strip with trustee Holmes. She says she felt disoriented and ultimately blacked out. Now, she says in her words, again, in the lawsuit, the last memory she has is waking up in his hotel room. According to the law, Sufania says she was fired shortly after bringing the accusation against Holmes to Mayor Henyard. So in the May 6th Village Board meeting, well, guess who shows up there? There's a large crowd of people waiting to get into this Village Board meeting. It starts late, but Fania shows up outside. She speaks to the crowd. And she uh, says, you know, thank you for supporting me. And she also talked about the foundation that she has started to help support women like her. So we have sent trustee Andrew Holmes repeated requests. I have sent him personal requests via text, phone call, emails for any type of uh, statement or response to this. Now, he does read the text messages. I get the receipts showing that they have been read, but he has not offered any official statement or spoken to me about these allegations. A few weeks ago, we were told that Sam Adam Jr. is his attorney. The office told me no comment when I called and ask for a statement. They said no comment. So that led me to believe that's his attorney. I was told that's his attorney. Call a few weeks ago, right after this, I am told Sam Adam is not representing Andrew Holmes. I said, did his office ever represent Andrew Holmes? I was told Sam Adams does not represent Andrew Holmes. So of course, Andrew Holmes is a well-known community activist. Crime scenes, he is there helping grieving families when they need someone the most. When there's been a shooting, a crime, an incident, he's always there. The face, the name, people, a lot of Chicagoans, they know who this man is. The nonprofit he worked for, Chicago Survivors, told me in April in a statement that amid a lawsuit and allegations that Andrew Holmes assaulted a former coworker, he was fired from this organization in April. So what does the village say about this Vegas trip? In a statement to NBC5, the village tells us that it conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations led by an independent third party company. It goes on to say Officer Miles was interviewed and denied knowing nothing about the allegations. It says Miss Dukes refused to cooperate with the investigation and this is nothing more than two disgruntled village employees. Now, neither Fania or Officer Byron Miles has addressed what the village is saying. But Officer Byron Miles was on that trip. Now, isn't that um, a quintessential response from what you normally get from law enforcement or internal affairs with regards to something that someone in authority, especially law enforcement or politics, um, did and it's being covered up? Now, this is absolutely ridiculous, right? And if you recall, Um, this young lady, Fania, she actually considered herself um, a mentee of the super mayor. And at the least, Fania was um, inspired by the mayor's drive, right? And her accomplishments. And we know that Mayor Henyard has a past, right? People often bring that up. But I'm going to be honest with you about that. I believe in second chances. I do. However, there are stipulations to that. Very stiff stipulations, meaning when you get that second chance, you cannot bring your street mentality to the platform of politics. We know people do it all the time, but remember, this is your second chance, right? And so you can't mess that up and you have already. So the compassion that a person or people, the community would have shown you that has gone out the window because you clearly are bringing these Rico-esque type of behaviors 
to um, this platform and it's not appreciated. Now, um, Regina has some more information that I think um, will stimulate your thinking. So um, let's get back to her. And of course, this is all my personal opinion and alleged. A civil lawsuit against Mayor Henyard. He says that he was part of a security detail and after speaking out about what allegedly happened in Vegas, he was taken off of her detail. But the trustees, the village trustees of Dalton, they say there was never any third party investigation, which is partly why they hired former Chicago mayor Lori Lightfoot to lead an investigation. Every month, Dalton holds two village board meetings on the first and the third Monday. Every month, this always happens. Tiffany Henyard has missed 25, two five of those meetings. Where did I get this information? From trustee Jason House. So Dalton trustees have named Jason House as a mayor pro tem to fill in for Tiffany Henyard in the event she's absent from a meeting or otherwise unable to fill her duties. So again, remember, the trustees also voted to hire former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot to investigate Henyard and the village's spending. But Henyard... You know, it's veto power. So how dare you think you could come in someone's town and... Tiffany Henyard recently vetoed that hire, saying the village is not going to pay Lightfoot her $400 an hour. So far, there's been no response from Lori Lightfoot about this. She has said it's going to take 60 days to complete her investigation. So now to the lawsuits. There's so many lawsuits. It's hard to keep track. There's so many of them. Some of the recent ones include uh, one filed in federal court by Tyrone Isom Jr. So I talked to Tyrone and he said he was really looking forward to starting his own business in Dalton. He said he wanted to help young people and that's why he was doing this. He wanted to open up a barber shop and a tattoo shop. He bought a building for $85,000. He took all the money he had out of his savings to do this, to buy this building. It was going to be his dream. He says he remodeled it, did everything he was supposed to do. He claims his applications for a business license were denied with no explanation. He says at one point he was told flat out the mayor wants this property. So he says he was forced to sell the property, never being able to open up his business. The village has declined to comment on a lawsuit. A police officer, also the latest public employee to file a lawsuit against the village of Dalton and Mayor Henyard, Jeffrey DeVries, accuses Henyard of illegally promoting other officers when they didn't pass the tests and they weren't approved by the village. And the lawsuit also accuses the mayor and police brass for tallying against him for reporting this and other alleged misconduct by fellow officers to the state police standards oversight board. So just two of the many uh, lawsuits that have been filed against the mayor and the village. And finally, the law firm that represents uh, Dalton in at least 19 lawsuits in Cook County and federal court has withdrawn from the cases due to not being paid. So a village official provided us with a letter that was dated April 24th, and the law firm sent this to the village, and it says, without being paid, we're going to step down from these cases. And that is what's happened. The next few months, I think they're going to be very interesting and very busy. And you know what? I'm going to be right here trying my best to cover all of this and get it to you. That's my promise. Right, wrong, or indifferent, love or hate her. With regards to Lori Lightfoot, it would have been a good idea to have her, with her experience, to come in and investigate um, the super mayor and her team um, for compliance. However, she has no legislative power or any law enforcement power. You know, at the most, it would have exposed um, the super mayor and her team. But as they've shown so far, they don't really care about that, right? They don't care about being exposed, case in point. Even under the watchful eye of the grand jury, now surfaces allegations that they're trying to get this budget is namely the 37 percent um salary increase for whomever that applies to um approved without properly um notifying the public now those are all allegations but think about how bold you have to be to be under a grand jury investigation but still proceeding with your own agenda as if you're entitled to do so. 
Hey, and if you haven't already, we would love to have you um, to be a part of the SC family. So please subscribe and like the video and we will see you on the next tea session because this tea is piping hot.